This is Jason Strudwick, and you're listening to Missing Curfew. Welcome back to a fresh new episode of Missing Curfew Up. Oh, big fella, Monday edition. Here we are, baby. Here yeah, we are. Here we are again what is in color? studio. That's, that's a nice. plum, plum, plum color. Right no, nah, it's Johnny, Johnny V. Johnny V. That's nice. Hey, it's nice. Still nice get a touch. discount there? Or what? Yeah, I think we get 40 off. Fuck, I spent a lot of money there throughout my career. <sighs> they should be giving us for free. <laughs> uh, listen, we we haven't uh, we haven't talked a whole lot of Oilers. I mean, we talk about them weekly, but we haven't had really anybody on. So we figured we'd reach out to Jason Strudwick here. Um, Talk a little Oilers. They've clinched the playoff spot. We all know what 97 and 29 are doing. Uh, it'll be interesting to talk yeah. to him here and see, you know, what his feel is on this team. Yeah, playoffs. I mean, playoffs coming up just around the corner. And what better guy to bring on? A guy that has personality, played the game the right way. Good Western leaguer, Camus Blazer, yeah. Memorial Cup champ. Um, a guy that uh, has has a spot every uh, Every first and second period with Bob Stoffer talking Oilers hockey with Gene Principe. It's great TV. I love the Oilers broadcast. Um, and I mean, the year that Leon and Connor put together and, and just what Connor's been doing, it's great to get a little insight. And, uh, you know, I, I love, I, I was part of a little study in uh, uh, my boy, Jason Greger, um, their show last year. We yeah. did a full show. So it's nice to, to catch up with my man. Bob, what's his name? Stafford? Stafford. That guy knows everything about the Oilers. Fuck eh? yeah, he does. He knows everything about it. He used to go to Loops' turn, you remember? America's best guest. Yeah, he knows everything. <laughs> and listen, they do a great, DeBrusque and the guy who does the play-by-play. -play, yeah, it's Jack Michaels. They do a great job, man. Jack and Michaels is a legend. Gene Principe, we should get Gene on. I've, I've had Gene on lucky enough with, with Cooley's show. Gene Principe is a pro. Yeah. I mean, the way he brings it in, how he uses it. Uh, I guess it would be rhyming, so to speak, right? He knows how to mix his words. and, and like, flow. Guys, yeah, he's a pro. So. Yeah, real pro. The broadcast yeah. is great. The on ice is absolutely fucking so. Uh, Jason Strudwick coming at you, Struddy. Welcome back to Mr. Curfew, Up Dog. Um, legend. This is a guy that I would have loved to play with, and I'm going to ask him right off the get go here, but I think he was the guy that get to the hotel, drop the bags. Drop the bags off. Where are we going? Yeah, that's right? good Alberta boy. That's, yeah, what like, that's, yeah, right. that's how was, we were born up there. Yeah, exactly. We didn't know any other way. So, Jason Strudwick, Struddy, thanks for joining us. And, fella, were you one of those guys that we got to the hotel, drop the bags? Where's Struddy going? Yeah, you know what? I, I did like, to, I mean, especially when I was younger, I was pretty, I like to explore the cities we visited. Um, you know, when it was, it was pretty fun, you know, you're 24, 25, 20, you know, in that age group, it's pretty good times to see what's up. And then you start to get your favorite cities. And there's some that I, I just like, I didn't like LA and I know you guys are down there. I, I didn't like going out there. I felt like we had to drive so far to go have a small lunch and maybe one drink. Like it was just complicated. Right. But you put me in Chicago, New York, Nashville. Oh yeah. 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 See hey, you tomorrow. <laughs> I think we'll, we'll agree to that. Actually. I will, especially Obes, Obes is a little Hollywood guy. Like he likes going out in Hollywood. And so do I, but Not anymore. We're, like this orange County life for us, it's pretty chill. I mean, it's fucking, right. we got a golf right. course. We got, uh, you know, we got the beach. Obi gets his walks now. Like we're at that point in our life too. We don't want to chase the Playing party. Pickleball, we don't Strutty. want to chase Playing the party pickleball. anymore. Yeah, no, I, Uppy's right. Like, right. you can't get me to LA anymore. When we were younger, right. I wanted to go every weekend. Now I'm like, I'm not leaving yeah. my little bubble here. So yeah. I know what you're saying. But <laughs> yeah, you all become like that. Your world shrinks a little bit. You got to get your, what are you up to? About 12, 13,000 steps a day, you two guys? What are you, <laughs> what are you, Strutty, what's your I, Strutty, listen, buddy. I, I'm a swimmer now. I, I swim. And I try to get 10,000 steps a day, Strutty, but I got to be honest with you, I'm probably averaging 5,000 to 7,000 if I, if I had to average right. it out. So. Fair. Not bad, Fair. not bad. It's a start, buddy. It's better than nothing. I think <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, got a, he's got something on his it's watch. It's a, it's a setting on his watch that gives him double steps sometimes. We'll come <laughs> off a golf game and he's like, fuck, that was 16,000 right there. I well, go, what? Yeah, listen, Strutty, when I play golf, I get like 15,000 looking for my ball and going two yeah. fairways over right. where my drive was and stuff like that. So. Right. Um, reach at the hole. Reach at the hole. That's exactly. my favorite one. Reach exactly. at the hole. You're Strutty, not playing well if you're using that line. Strutty, I'm with you on Chicago, though. What a great city that was back in the day. Oh. That was one of my favorites, and, and it's changed a lot over the years. But how good was that back in the day? Just staying right downtown. Good, good restaurants. Great place to have cocktails. I loved it. And there's so many things around there, right? And the people of Chicago, I, I played there for a couple of years. I yeah. actually met my wife there. The people there are amazing. Like, so, so mellow. Uh, you know, hoodies and runners. That's what they're wearing out. And I loved it. Like, I, I just, I thought it was a great place to live. And uh, the people there are incredible. Yeah, let me ask you about the Blackhawks. I, I, one of my former teammates, I, I don't know if you ever played with Luke Richardson or against him, but I, I love him. I think he's done a decent job for everything they've been through. They compete night in and night out. What have you seen from the Hawks as a former player? It's tough. You know, I, I've been in those situations before where you're, you know, and unfortunately I was there before the, the Blackhawks really went on their run is where teams are just trying to, they're trying to get younger and, and accumulate draft picks and young players. And 
it's difficult, you know, especially if you become an older player and you're in that situation and you, you know, you're supposed to work hard. You're a, a pro. I get that. You're getting paid, but it is difficult. Then you see a guy like Kane walk out the door, then stuff with Taze, and then, you know, Keith's left in recent years. Seabrook, all these guys, right? It becomes really difficult to stay in there and compete. But, you know, Luke has, uh, and I never played with him, but I played against him and I know of him. And he seems to get the guys to play and give it everything they can. And I, at the end of the day, for a team in that situation, if you show up and compete every night, I think that's a win because, yeah. you know, they just don't have the talent. And I've been on bad teams where, you know, you can say all the right things. Yeah, we're going to win. We're going to do this and do that. But when you look at the board and they put up <laughs> their top four lines and you put your top four up and you're like, man, this can be a long night. Uh, <laughs> I think just showing up is, is a good thing. And I think yeah. I'll put Arizona in the same same bracket. You know, I think that those guys compete every night. And they're even, they're even doing less. They have like a $10 million salary cap, you know, after all the free money they have on there. So Give those guys, these teams credit and the coaches. Like I, I, cause it's easy to just to give up, give in. Yeah. You're so right. Strutty. I remember the lockout year we're in Colorado. We, we look at the board. We're like, we got, we got no fucking chance. Hey, we're playing the sharks. I'm like, we had zero chance. Like Jumbo's going to have three. Marlo's going to get two. Boyer's going to have right. like, we, we yeah, can say and, all the right things here, boys. And but. then you need a good coach. Cause it's like the longest year or longest I days know. long. Right. You're I like, know. You're just like, God, I wish I had a coach who just understands that our team just isn't as good. Yeah. But if we try, then it's like everyone's, you know, everyone wins. Yeah, it makes it fun, like, to come to the rank and work hard and compete. Like, I think Luke Richardson and, and Strutty, the guy in, in Arizona, um, I always fuck his name up, but he's done a hell of a job. Yeah, he's done a great yeah. job, too, of, of building a culture there where, like you said, they come in, they play hard, and they compete. And that's, that's all you want. Like, you know, I, you know, I go to quite a few games now and I just want to see the team try the hard as they can. Obviously you need more skill to win, but you know, eventually, you know, I'm, if you're the Hawks and, and Arizona, you're going to add some pieces like Arizona's got Gunther. Uh, what is it? Logan Cooley or whatever. Then, you know, I guess they're trying to get Bedard. I think they're doing too well for that, but you start plugging those guys into that, that, that culture that are more skilled and hopefully they keep that work ethic up. Uh, and then you can kind of turn it around. It's, it's not a quick turnaround, but Otherwise, you know, there's nothing worse than being a bad team and not showing up to play and just getting spanked. And I've been on that side of it before where you've just get spanked. I've been on good teams and we spank bad teams and you can just see it in their faces. They're, you know, they just don't want to be out there. So, I, it, you know, they don't have much train uh, or track left to go this year to finish. And hopefully they can kind of get better because it, it, I mean, those are good markets, Chicago especially. It, yeah. The NHL needs that team to be good. I think the NHL is better when the Blackhawks are winning. 100%. And It'll be interesting to see where the where the, the draft ball uh, balls lay, but I'm with you. Like if, if they got Bedard in Chicago, I think it'd be the best thing for the NHL and for him too, because it's such a great city. But uh you 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 talk about it straight. Like we talk about we're all lucky to play in the NHL, greatest league in the world, best time ever. But when you're on a bad team this time of year, maybe like go back three weeks, this time you can see the finish line. But right now you're like, Holy shit, we got a month and a half of this left or a month left. Are you kidding me? I remember one year I had it down to my shifts, how many shifts I had left with about, you know, 10 games left. I got about 20 shifts a game or whatever. So I'm like around 200 shifts. I'll take a couple of penalties, maybe get a fighting major, you know, it was down to like about 170 shifts. And, uh, and it was awful. I mean, it's not, you just, and I know it's, it's embarrassing to say that, but when you're losing and then what happens is, and you'll you've seen it already in the NHL, all of a sudden guys have out for the rest of the year with a back injury out with a groin injury out with, you know, a small hangnail. And so guys are looking for ways to get out. And I get it. Like, I, I do get it. I don't always agree with it, especially when you're on that team and you're the one out there battling and you look over and, you know, Jimmy Cricket over there has a bad back and can't play, but then he's golfing two days after the season's over. Like, yeah. what do you, I mean, I get it, but at some point you got to hang in there with your buddies and try to wrap this thing up together. And totally. Strutty, those, great point, Strutty. those guys, they may not know it now, but they'll be doing anything for those 170 shifts back when totally. they're, when they're done with the game and they're like, fuck, what do I do now? My wife's all over me and my, you know, I got four kids running around. I have no right. time to just be with the boys. I would do anything for that tough hangnail and like just to chip one off the wall and out. That's true. That's true. Oh, yeah. Like right? that, that year in Colorado, I remember, I was counting down the days like Strutty. I don't know if I went down to the shift. That's a veteran play by you, but I would give anything to go back to those two months now and be like, all right, I'll suck it up and just be yeah. bad, but be at the rink with the boys and yeah. I'll take the minus three tonight. I don't give a fuck. I just want to be up there <laughs> with the boys, but um, Strutty, I heard you on with O-Dog and Noodles. Uh, they were talking about Daisy Dukes or something. I was dying laughing. Can you explain that to me or so? Or is that just O-Dog being a beauty? 
Yeah, old dog is always he's always trying to. One time, he made the comment that I, I when I go into Costco, there's a lot of rubbernecking going on because I got these new tight skinny jeans, and uh, he just loves it. I'm like, oh, I'm huge. I hit you know I hit the Costco after I drop the kids off at school, so I'm there with a lot of the other moms, right? And so I'm always like, I wear the tightest jeans, and he just loves hearing it. So now you want to know what I was gonna do in the summer? I'm like, well, I gotta cut them off, and I cut it just a little bit short to show a little bit of cheek. You know, I'm sure up you have a pair of those. Yeah, you know, sure walking do. up and down the up and down the shores of the great ocean there so yeah that's that's where he gets it it, it, it is kind of funny it was hilarious. I sometimes was the shirts are a little too short <laughs> that's uh your days back going on the road to nashville but everyone had to have a pair of daisy dukes i think going. i can speak for old dog because we're in the same situation we're just jealous we can't get in a pair of daisy dukes eh? I, I think that's the thing old dog i feel your pain brother I that's, feel your a, pain. that's a chafing you do not want to deal with right uh, there old dog told a story about when he goes in the bulk barn back in ontario with the he, he go in with like a sack of like a, a Santa Claus sack and come out with kid. I mean, <laughs> some of the shit that comes out of his mouth, Struddy, is gold. He's on. He's he is really good. Those three guys, him, Hayes, and Noodles, are unbelievable. I mean, those. those I think they're three of the best. And yeah. they, they, they and the best part is when they don't talk about sports. They I just know. go off on a tangent. And I, I just I just die laughing. They're so funny. That's what me and Uppy and 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 you know we love talking hockey, obviously, but we've been trying to be more like that and and, and try to talk yeah. stuff away from hockey because, like you said. When I listen to Overdrive, that's my favorite part when they start talking about right. anything but hockey. So, yeah. Ted, talk me about your relationship with Noodles a little bit. You guys go way, way back. You're both Edmonton boys. Are you same age, maybe? Do you play against each other growing up, or what? what's the relationship? No, he's a little older. He's about, I think, about five years older. Oh, he is at all. And um, yeah, you know, the first time I, worked, I met him, I was invited to work at his hockey school. And I had no idea who he was. And, uh, you know, and I, I was like, yeah, I'll do it for the hundred bucks a week or whatever it was we got back then. And uh, he, you know, then he took it out one night and I was like, this guy is unbelievable. He taught me a lot of things that I didn't know. Like, not that I was, I wasn't like a, a, a real naive kid, but I was kind of sheltered. And then you go out with him one night and everything changes. You're like, whoa, this is how you live. I get it. My hundred bucks I earned was gone. Like I spent it on, on Bud Lights and uh, China White Shops. And, um, but it was crazy. Like he, and we, we're, we're still really tight. We try to hook up a couple times a year and, and our families are close, but yeah, he is one, truly one of the funniest human beings I've ever been around. Yeah, he was great for me. I met him in uh, when I just retired in Vancouver. The lead singer for Nickelback, Chad. We were at a Chad's house, yeah. and and uh, Noodles was great for me. I picked his brain about you know life after hockey and doing this, and he gave me some advice. Yeah. And uh, he's a natural. You can tell when he when he does when he talks, it's it's always entertaining. Uh, he's he's unreal, and he always when I was like you know kind of in our prime, he'd always be like, uh, "What are you doing tonight?" After you know, I'd be like, "Ah, oh, not much." He's like, <laughs> "Let's just go take a peek. Let's just go take a peek." And so it'd be Thursday night or Wednesday night at Barry T's. I'd be like, "No, nah, I don't really want to go." I'll just go take a peek. And then like, you know, you're home at two. <laughs> yeah. Just like it happened every time and every week. And that was our code word. Like, let's just go take a peek. And that meant we were, we were going out still. Now we try to go take a peek when we're together with our wives and they know, they know that it's going to be a short night or a long night for yeah. us. You, night got, for you guys we always might have to make that t-shirt for your boys. Take a peek. That might be, <laughs> that might be a new t-shirt strategy. We'll send you a couple. Take a peek. Let's go take a peek. I just Love always it. remember those two weeks at the end of summer where you're just trying to grind it back oh, into shape. And these fuck. two idiots would be sitting next to each other at the Perry Pern <laughs> hockey school. And they'd come in and they'd, they, they probably had taken a peek on a Wednesday or Thursday. <laughs> okay. And it would be Friday would be the, the tournament, right? And, yeah. you know, that's when it would get competitive and MC would be there fucking dangling everyone. And Chimera would be trying way too hard. But you two were always <laughs> sitting together having the, the most fun in the whole, the whole yeah. thing. I love that. Well, by the end, we started taking Thursday off because it was always <laughs> Wednesday night. We go out and so go hard Monday, Wednesday or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, go out Wednesday night, go, take Thursday off. Then go back Friday for the championship, <laughs> and then go for a, 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 a OB a seven thousand or seven thousand step walk on Saturday and call it even. <laughs> uh, that's that's a couple old pros there. I, I like that. But hey, Struddy, uh, you're a former Camloof Blazer here, like my boy, the Updog. We're thinking about maybe going up to the Mem Cup as an ex Blazer. Is that something you're thinking about, or just maybe your time in Camloof? It's pretty cool that they're going to have the Mem Cup. It's great. And, uh, you know, they haven't hosted it since we won it. Like the last time it was there, and my buddy, Jason Hall and I, we literally just booked our flights today. We're going to go up together, uh, the second week and, and, uh, check it out. And, uh, hopefully some of our old teammates will be there, but I mean, I have such good memories. The Memorial cup is a great tournament. It's yeah. a hard one to win. Uh, you know, and you, you go so hard, you get through your league and then you're like, okay, well, great work, but now you got to win again. You're like, what? And I remember <laughs> the first time I was, I didn't really know a lot about it. They, our countless blazer team was 
you know, we weren't that good till Christmas. And also we just, we all figured out how to play and we worked so hard. We went out and, um, you know, we, we beat, I don't forget, I mean, we beat Saskatoon or ever in the final. And then I remember I was so happy. And I was like, we got to go to the Memorial Cup. I'm like, what? We have to win something else? Like, I was blown away. We got to win something more. Yeah. And so Don Hayes yelling at us, we're practicing. I'm still sore from battling like Wade Belak or whatever. I'm like, oh my God. And we go out there and there's all these animals out there, like Brad Brown and all these crazy guys. I'm like, what is going on? And we won. But uh, it's it's a it's a fun, fun tournament. I, yeah, so we'll be there. So if you guys are able, we'll have to hook up. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're on top of it. We're texting with Sid and Stevie Passmore and the, all the boys. Oh, yeah. He's, they've been yeah. doing a great job of trying to get everyone the most information. So you're going second week. That's yeah. Go yeah. go and you yeah, can see there, the I end in sight. Thirtieth, thirty first, and yeah. the first. We're going to be there. Holly and I are, are wheeling in there. So so how do I get there? I fly right here to Van City, then Van City right to Can Loops, or how do I get we'll there? We'll go. Uh, because I wouldn't mind a night van if we could do that. Too. Yeah, would definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Orange County, Vancouver. Night, night van. And yes. then up to yeah. Can Loops. Can we do that? Fella tour, here we come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's Johnny, you're a beauty, buddy. Uh, let's talk some Oilers hockey. You're doing great things, buddy. I love when I see you on the tele. By the way, the whole Oilers telecast in general is great. Yeah, I uh, want to talk yeah. about fuck, our boy Jack Michaels. Down here, people uh, people love watching a Connor McDavid game on ESPN Plus yeah. back home. And then I, yeah. I talk to my Alberta buddies, my, my boy TJ. I'm like, buddy, this Jack might like. I like when he calls Connor McDavid and dry sidle goals. I think it's the best, best thing of all time. Is it good? Like live as it is, like you see this guy in action. Is he as good live as he is on TV? And well, you know what's special about those two guys is they're both so great, but they're so great in different ways. You know, and like you think of the Sedins, they're both amazing and they're, but they're very similar. Mm -hmm. And then you have these two guys that are doing great things on, on different wavelengths. Like, uh, McDavid, obviously the speed, the stick handling, and then now he's added the, the element of shooting as a defensive. You don't have to pass or shoot or skate around you. It's pretty scary. Then you got Lee on the other side who is, is a good skater, but he's not like McDavid, um, but he can pass so well and he's so big and he loves to feel contact. You know, he does the old reverse hit. Uh, D man, we hated that one. Um, and then he can he can score too. Like he can he can beat you in so many ways. And I love that they're on separate lines. I, I think they are incredible together. I mean, that's not a hard thing to figure out. But when they are spread out, I think it just gives you a uh, matchup issues for teams trying to figure out who are they going to try to slow down because you can't stop either one. You can slow one down or the other one down, but it's hard to stop both. Um, but they just do such great things in different ways. And the, the season they're having, then he mix in Nugent Hopkins. He'll get to a hundred points too. Uh, Kane, who's, you know, just, he just, either he scores or he doesn't play, you know, cause he's injured. It's crazy <laughs> yeah. how good he's been. And then he got, uh, some other guys around there now growing up and getting better, becoming stronger players. Like, it's just, it's a fun team to watch. And I, you know, I, I like to, to, to cheer for teams that I enjoy watching. Like I, I like watching Tampa. I like the way they play yeah. and I like that team and maybe coming off their dynasty run, but they're a fun team to watch. And I find the orders in a lot of ways are very similar. They're just fun to watch the way they play and compete. It's, it's pretty cool. I'm with you. And, you can, and for me, it's a Colorado Avalanche, one of my former teams, Struddy. I, yeah. I love watching them right. play, too. They're fun to play. I love watching the Oilers. My question to you, Struddy, is in our prime, what would we done against 97? Like, let's say me and you are out there against them. Are we, are, is communication going to work, Struddy? Can we talk our way through it, or, or what are we going to do? Buddy, we do a good job of talking now. We's, we could have talked that much when he played, and we weren't stopping him. Like, the guy is – he's just – you know what? I think as a defender, I, I, you know, I kind of talked to him a little bit, but you don't know what he's going to do. So is he going to shoot, pass, or skate around me? And that's a really scary feeling. And then, you you, you know, the foot speed, it wasn't exactly my my strength. Um, you know, <laughs> if he either. wants to get in the corner and grind it on the walls, I'm all for it. But he's going to want to keep it in the middle and try to cut back in front or take you wide. And we've seen him do it to really good defensemen, whether it's Riley or Drew Doughty or all these elite, elite defensemen. So, um, you know, I definitely would have probably been looking for a quick change. I want to be eating a minus, <laughs> but then the problems you change and Leon's line comes out. I'm like, Oh my God, I got to change again. Another sore hammy coach. And then, then you go out against maybe the third or fourth lines and those guys are working pretty hard. So it's, yeah, it's a tough deep lineup, deep lineup. Str I, I would have said, listen, we'll go, we'll go up the strong side. We win a clean strategy. You go up the strong side. We'll change after that. That's what that would have been. Uh, yeah. been <laughs> we'll get it out. We'll change. But real quick, yeah, I just wanted to ask you because you did play the game the right way. You competed down the corners and the, and the way you played. I loved it. When you watch games now, Struddy, me personally, in front of the net drives me fucking crazy, man. How's that? I love Zach Hyman, but how he can... He scored a goal the other night. He was in the blue paint. Literally yeah. in there. Like, as an ex-defenseman that played physical, does it bug you or have you just accepted and that's the way it is nowadays? Well, the game's evolving all the time, right? And I and I think there are still some defensemen who d defend that area pretty hard. 
Um, and I'm, I'm looking like the guy that the Oilers picked up at home. He's still pretty hard in those areas. And even uh, D- Vinny Darnay, who looks like he should be on a mob show, uh, <laughs> you know, he's he's come in and he's also kind of bring that in. I think that, you know, when when you play that way, you 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 stand out so much now. I don't see why more guys don't play with a little more stoutness in around the blue paint, like. It's there now. If you're a smaller guy, I'm, and I'm not looking for Hughes or whatever to do it, but there are other players that could do it and just add it to your game and kind of get out of your comfort zone. When you do that, I think it really stands out. Um, you know, and I, I call it being hard to play against. Being hard to play against, you know, 15, 20 years ago was was a lot different than it is now. But now you can still do it by making it difficult for the forward to get out of the corner after they pass it out or to get to the front of the net or even when they dump it in, just that little bit of interference, you know. And and these are different ways you can be hard to play against for D-men that when, you, when people do it, it makes it look really, really – it stands out because not many do it. So, yeah, I mean, Hyman, I love the way he plays. I love the way he goes in the net. But at the same time, you got to kind of push him out of there. Um, and, yeah. and that's why – if he add up all his goals, I don't think it adds up to 100 feet <laughs> the distance know, he shot from the net, right? I mean, and that's a compliment. I mean, he scored 30 – what is he at, 33 or something, whatever it is. 34, yeah. Yeah, but back then, like our era, it was – if you weren't a D-man that made it hard on other guys, you didn't play. Yeah. Every, even the top defensemen, top young guys coming in had to have a, a big, hard, heavy game. Yeah. It was just – that was the way it is. And now, like forwards, I would tell my son, like, go stand in front of the net until someone even thinks of moving you away. It yeah. was before you couldn't get there. Get there and just don't – no one's going to – yeah, I'm with you. I would go right there and just camp out. Uh, Struddy, what's the difference in, you know, watching McDavid the last seven years, you know, he's had seasons where he's just, he goes on this tear and then he, you know, there's like a a couple week break where, you know, he's either trying to catch his breath or something, but a little bit of a lot. He has kept this thing going this year. It seems like every other day he's doing something bigger and better. His speed has been there. Um, You know, he was willing to shoot the puck this year, which is why he's got 60 goals. But what have you seen? like in him this year that says like, this is my year and I'm not slowing down at all. And just follow me. It it really feels that he's just doing whatever he thinks he needs to do to help the team win. I I really think that, like, I don't think he ever goes into a game and says, man, I got to score four points tonight because I got to, you know, get to 150 or whatever, 155. He thinks if I score four points tonight, that gives us the best chance to win. And I think that goes the same with the shooting. Like, I don't know that he set out to score 50. I mean, all the great players want to score 50, and I'm sure some part of his head he's rattling around thinking, I got to get 50. But he is literally the best option in a lot of situations. So he's like, that's the best option. I'm going to shoot it. And that's how those best, the best players I ever played with are always wired that way. What's the best way for us to win? What gives you the best chance? And a lot of times the answer is 97. So, or 29 in that case. So I think he's really kind of trying to play that game to figure out what's the best for him. And there's some nights where you've seen him where he's decided like against LA um, last Thursday, they won two nothing. Um, even though he scored that amazing shorthanded goal, he decided tonight I've got to be good defensively. And I think he just said, that's the best chance. And that's how he kind of is computing and organizing what it looks like moving forward. Um, you know, cause there's been some criticism in the past about the way he and 29 play defense and you got to cheat to score. I mean, that's, let's just be honest. There's gotta be some at Epi. I know you used to cheat a lot in Kamloops <laughs> as my scouting report I got from you about you, but I 42 think that, you goals, know, you, but, come on. yeah, well, you got it, you know, and, 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 you know, most of them were not empty netters. So, I mean, that's, that's <laughs> a pat on the back to you, but I think when you're, you're trying to put it together, you do have to cheat, but as you work your way through the season, there are some games that are not cheating games and that was and i think tonight for the orders same thing today's a not cheating game because you know kopitar to know yeah. those types of more who i love as a player i i think that these guys they know they're waiting for those guys to cheat and when you don't they're kind of like wait a minute we're not getting these counter punch chances we want off off of uh you know stacking up the blue line they're chipping it behind us and then you kind of their game plan can't unfold because you're not doing what they expect i think that is truly what you become a, a team that starts understanding how to play the game, how to manage games. And it's okay to win two, nothing like tonight. If the owners win two, nothing, two, one, three, one, that's a great game. You don't have to get, you know, a ton of points each. Yeah. And stick with 97 and 29. The thing that I've noticed this year is the physical play. Like the other night, two weeks ago against Vegas, McNabb cross check McDavid right in the fucking kidneys. And the next yeah. chick dry settle runs them. McDavid runs them. Like, they're, they're the two best players. And when, when shit kind of goes sideways, they're right there physically too, Shreddy. Yeah, they are. And, yeah. You know, you look at the hit the, uh, uh, McDavid had a Mike Anderson the other night. You know, you know, and I I don't like the hitting from behind, but I didn't feel like he really buried him, right? Yeah. The ones I don't like is when the players hit from behind, his head goes first into the boards. That's the one. When you kind of carry a guy in, 
I'm not quite as hard on that. I know some people wanted a five minute or, but <laughs> no those way. guys are, are, they have a bit of a chip on their shoulder, especially Leon. Like that's a guy that I would just play him hard, but don't piss him off. Cause when he gets pissed off, it's like, Oh my, cause he's so big and so strong. And I, I've seen him run Ryan Reeves. I've seen him run different guys. Cause he didn't like what Ryan Reeves did to one of his teammates. Like it's just crazy. So, you know, it's, 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 you know, in my lifetime, I got the chance to watch Messi and Gretzky here with the Oilers and some other players great as well. And now I'm seeing McDavid and and and, and Leon, you know, now that my career is complete again, I get to watch two great players up close and it's pretty special. And I and I got to say, guys, I, I never thought I'd compare anyone to Wayne Gretzky or, or, or kind of Mary Lemieux, but I put I put Connor up there. What he's doing um, is just amazing. And, and, you know, he's doing it in a time of era of tighter, tighter defenses. You know, everyone can skate. Uh, goalies are bigger and better and, and that's not to take anything away from Wayne but th- it is really impressive what he's he's doing and sustaining it and I, and I, I didn't think a player would get to 150 points I didn't think it happened and here we are we're talking about it knocking on the door where's he got five six games left to get I think four points yeah. to get to 150 like come on man this that's is crazy wild. it's crazy and I remember watching Wayne I was young when when Wayner played and but to yeah. me McDavid is the best player I've ever witnessed play the game like when I watch him I'm just like this is insane to me like yeah, and the look in his eyes, like every night I flip on the Oilers game and I watch quite often, he's got that same look in his eyes. Like, all right, let's fucking go. It doesn't matter if they're playing Columbus or if they're playing Calgary. This whole year he's had that look straight of, I'm going. Who's coming with me? Yeah, well, what's, what else does he have? Like, what else does he need? He does, he's got the the personal trophies. Yeah. He's got the money. Like, for those guys who are driven by one thing, and that's winning. That's it. That That's the only thing that matters. He, he knows he'll get another massive contract. He knows he'll get whatever trophies and all that stuff. And it, it, that's, to him, it, it, it's, it, that's not, I, I don't think it would be exciting anymore. It's just about the win and getting the Stanley Cup so he can enter that that group. And, you know, Oilers, Ken Holland's done a pretty good job of building up this group. Um, I like the moves he's made. They seem to be deeper than they've ever been. They're they're quite quite a big group, pretty well coached or very well coached. You know, they got a chance. You know, I don't think Colorado is as good as they were last year. Last year, I didn't think anyone could beat them. And that was pretty easy. I don't, you know, don't be a genius. But now this year, like, is it is who's the guy? Who's the team in the West? Like, no, is all, it really yeah. the wild? You know, Colorado, is it Vegas? I don't know. Maybe some, you know, there's a lot of different goalies there. So I think anyone's got a chance. And I would put orders right at the front of that anyone's got a chance conversation. Yeah, I was just going to, when you say Kenny Holland, does Kenny Holland sit back and watch these games now going – we're in a better spot last year right now than we were last year. Like this is, this is as close that we've, we've been in the last, you know, couple of years since I've been here. Is that, is that his model right now? When Ken Holland came in his original, uh, or his first press conference, they, you know, he's asked, he said, you know, what, what do you have to do here to make this team surrounding Croner and Leon be better? He said, listen, there's not one trade. I can't just trade for whoever. And it's going to change everything. My job to every, every time I make a move is to make the team a little bit better. So, you know, this team is better now than they were this time last year. Just look at some of the moves they made. So he trades for Clean Cost, and it was kind of off the scrap heap, right, um, for, a, for a young defenseman. And Clean, you know, he had a hot streak, and he slowed down, but he's still a, a functional, big-bodied, well-skated, or good-skating forward. Uh, they, they bring up Vinny Darnay, big guy, mean. You know, he just he's old school. He wants to just hammer on people. They trade for Bukestad. They trade for Ekholm. You know, they bring in Yanmark, who was unable to start the season. Now he's here. So that's five players he's brought in. And, you know, it hasn't really cost them that much, right? Yeah, that echo almost quite a bit. But all the other guys, it wasn't like they traded everything away to add to these groups that are now bigger and stronger. I think Bouchard is playing even better than he did last year now with echo beside him. Stu Skinner, you know, has kind of picked up the pace where maybe Campbell hasn't found that that his groove just yet with this team, which is, 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 is somewhat of a challenge for the Oilers. But, you know, Skinner's been great. Um, you know, the signing of uh, Nugent Hopkins for the deal a couple of years ago, great deal. Um, you know, there's just a lot of different guys that are coming in, competing, even moving out Pooley Arvey. And, and and you get a young prospect back, but you didn't have to take, keep any money. So, you know, he just continues to add to this group. And don't forget, there's a guy named Dylan Holloway in the minors who, whether he plays this year or next year, he's another guy that'll play on the team. Uh, Broberg, a young D-man, I really like him. He's the seventh guy right now. But, you know, whether it's this year or next year, probably next year more than this year, he'll be a part of the team well. So you keep bringing in the young players, stockpile them, taking out the older, more expensive guys. So Ken Holland has done a good job. Now it's up to the coaching staff and players to deliver. And I, I they've got to get, you know, at least to the third round this year, I think, because that's, that's what their expectations are. And I, I'm guessing it's well past that even, what they want. 
Strud, I used to say Pooh Yarvey's the only guy that could keep McDavid off the score sheet. <laughs> and I'm sure it's he's a hard. great I'm sure he's a great yeah. guy. I'm sure he's a great guy. I've never yeah. met a bad Finn, but I'm happy for him to move on. And that was a great move by Kenny Holland. And everything you said, I agree with the size, uh, the sneaky moves he's made. I want to ask you about Vinny Darnay. Struddy, I love this kid. Um, everything that you said, but the thing that I love, Struddy, is he can make a good first pass. He can make that little play to the to the D man, to the center. Like, am I getting too ahead of myself here? Like, I think this guy could maybe be a shutdown guy come playoff time, or is that a little bit too, you know, too excited at this point? Yeah, well, you know, luckily they have four guys above them that are going to be able to play a lot of those minutes, right? So, and and then when you get to the playoffs, who, what Kulak and Darren, their minutes are they between ten and fifteen, maybe? But he's become a very important part of the penalty kill for the Oilers. Most nights he's second or third in D-man penalty killing minutes, which is pretty impressive for a guy who's, you know, he looks like he's forty-two and he should be doing a podcast with the four of us. But you know, he's 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 a guy that moves around well. And I'll, you know, everyone I talk to talks about how hard of a worker he is. And I go down to practice, and this guy stays on the ice after with the skill coaches and assistant coaches, the Oilers, working on his movement, right? So it's skating, it's puck moving, it's moving all around, and so he's he's a throwback mentality, trying to add that that new flavor to to. Uh, the, the skill part of his game, um, but he's mean and he protects the front of the net. Yeah, he takes a few penalties they don't love, but you know what? They you think those guys are coming back to the front of the net after he's cross checked him a couple times? I mean, against Boston, <laughs> I can't remember it was a game at home or away. He slashed Pasternak on the back of the, the on the on the back, like just cracked him on the back, and he got a penalty. And it was a tough time to take a penalty, but you know what? I'm like, all right, buddy, like pass to remember that he's not going to come back in there maybe quite as quickly as he did before. Yeah, that was a good thing. He slashed him right in the back. That was a good one. I'm like, boy, he's got to kill that one for him. That's, that yeah, one's yeah. going to leave a mark. That one's going to leave a mark. Well worth it. Yeah, Struddy, I just want to parlay that into, you know, a lot of times they go 11 and 7, and I get it, right? You want to get McDavid and, and Drysdale out there some more. But to me, when I think the Oilers are at their best is when they play six defensemen. Like, do you think come playoff time, I know things change through the course of the series, but in your opinion, when you watch them every night, is 6D man the better approach for the Oilers come playoff time? I hated seven defense yeah, as a player. I hated it. Because it. it'd be like you and me are sharing a spot, I then all of a sudden you get going and old Uncle Strutty's just sitting on the bench <laughs> for half the game, sharing a hot dog with a backup goalie. Like I hated it. But um yeah, you know what I think it is? I think it is a function that they're they're they feel that at maybe their their seventh defenseman is better than their their twelfth forward. But the reality is this is that they, they, they played um uh, last game they had 12 and 6. The game prior against the Kings, they had tw- uh, 11 and 7. But Broberg was the seventh defenseman. He played three and a half minutes. So they have their six guys, and those six guys are going to play. So yeah. I'm not sure what they're going to do tonight, but I'm guessing if they go with seven, Broberg's not going to play a lot. You know, maybe if they play uh, San Jose or whatever, they'll, they'll crank those minutes up. Um, so I think when you get in the playoffs, it's probably a 12 and 6 scenario. Uh, and then if you if Connor and Leon want to get out there more, you want to get out there more, that, that 12th or 11th forward just sits out. But yeah. every you know that the key for a forward is to be able to find a way onto a special teams. If you're not a penalty killer and you're on the power play, it's hard to get those extra minutes. And oftentimes it'll be you that's sitting in there in the middle of the bench, not going out. Yeah, and real quick, sorry, yeah. I, I like Devin Shore, Strutty. I think Devin Shore brings a yeah. lot to the table, and that that's kind of to me. If 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 you're going seven D and not playing Devin Shore, to me, I don't like that personally because I think he brings a lot to the table in a in a in a role of a veteran that plays hard and can forecheck. Well, talk about this guy's journey this year. He didn't play for like a month. Then he gets called in and like, we want to send you down. He's like, no problem. Send me down. And he goes down there and gets playing. Then he comes back up and he's, and his confidence is back. Right. I'll send you forget. Like it's not the end of the world. Get sent down the minor sounds awful, but you get sent down. You get to play and you come back up. You're like, Oh, I can play again. I can remember. I can actually play this game. So Devin Shore is a very smart guy. He's a guy that's going to continue to get contracts because he understands his role in the team. Yeah, it sucks. Not playing. We've, I, we've all been through sitting out is brutal. Yeah. But if you, complain and bitch about it they'll just you're out and they'll find someone else that will do it Devin Shore can be witness to a pretty amazing era of NHL hockey for a few years here if he just keeps working hard bringing the right energy you know some nights you're a caddy some nights you get to go out there and play but (laughs) the nights you're a caddy be the biggest cheerleader when those guys come in you high five them hug them like they just solved uh you know how to how to cure cancer so he's a very very smart player and I think you're right He's a guy that's going to earn a spot in that lineup, but there's other guys as well. I mean, Ryan McLeod isn't, he isn't, he's been a hurt. He's coming back some point. Clean Costin is another guy that can maybe take him out. I doubt Yanmark comes out. Um, Derek Ryan doesn't deserve it, but he might come out, right? Because you have the depth, especially when you go with 11, there'll be a couple, two, three players sitting on the outside looking in. Yeah, I was just going to parlay that into winning championships in this league. 
you need those guys that you just mentioned yeah. to be guys that step up in key moments because it's not just going to be Connor and Leon the whole playoffs, right? It's not going to be Nuge the whole playoffs. You know, l- last year it's the Lekkonens and it's everyone chipping in, you know, on Kadri, car. Yeah. The, these guys, yeah. it needs to be the depth. So those depth guys become more important as it goes on and then their careers, you know, last longer because yeah. they're... Yeah, and Strutty, to your point about, you know, being a good team guy, it took me going back down to the jungle. When I went back down to the jungle and I realized, okay, when I come back Riding up, the iron when lung. I come back <laughs> up, I don't care how many minutes I play. Good fucking job, Bumpy. Yeah. Way to go, Bully. Way to go, boys. Like, what time's the plane leaving? Like, because I don't really want to go back down there and ride the bus. But it, it's there's only one way you can handle it, Strutty. Go down, play hard. And when you do come back, be a good guy like Devin Shores being. Yeah. Oh, that that's the only way. I mean, unless you're a top six forward or a top four defenseman, you're, you know, Unfortunately, you're replaceable in many ways, right? Now, I know contracts and stuff and, and that, but you got to find a way to find yourself to make yourself invaluable, and especially today in the cap world. If you're a $7 million guy, or sorry, 700000 whatever the minimum is, up to, what is it, 1.2, they can hide in the minors, you're valuable. You're, you're a valuable currency because they can stuff you in the minors or call you back up without having to make a bunch of ton of moves. So it's a valuable price point. Now, you don't make the same as the $5 million guys, but I'd rather play 10 years in the NHL than a million than one year at $5 million, right? And I think that's where those guys, it's hard. You know, it's you obviously want to play and make as much money as you can, but there's opportunities in there to have extend, to have a long career um, and be valued because the cap is so tight now. It is yeah. like Nick Bukestad. This guy, you know, I don't know where he's going to end up, but he's had an incredible year on a minimum contract. So does he come back here to the orders? Maybe. But he's he's now he's going to have multiple teams looking at uh, to bring him in, and now his, his money not be huge, but he's going to be able to play for a number of years because of that, or continue to play for a number of years because of that. Sound like what? a good Western. Yeah, league, right? Right? <laughs> when you see Bugi say say up dog say what's up Punchy, didn't you call him Punchy? Punchy, no, Punchy, no, Punchy, Punchy. Oh yeah, Punchy. From, they call him. Yeah, from uh, huge from uh, what's that show? Oh Jesus, oh, it's. Shameless? No, Ray Donovan. Ray Donovan. Yeah. He's a bunch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Strutty, last one for me, buddy. Uh, you you mentioned Vander Kane earlier when we had you, uh, when we started this interview. And listen, injuries are tough. We've all been through it. You know, you miss as much time as he had. I think he's playing his best hockey. For you, would you agree with that? And I think when Uppy talks about other guys that got to help 97 and 29, I think it starts with him too, right? Like he needs to be going like he was last year. You know, when, when he joined the Oilers, you know, there he's been on a number of teams and you're like, okay, how's this going to work? Where is he going to fit? Like, what, where is his mindset going to be? And he came in and he was a, you know, from everything I heard, just an incredible teammate and incredible on the ice. And and the biggest thing for other teams playing against Kane is he's so unpredictable. They have no idea what this guy is going to do. They have no clue. Is he going to score? Is he going to run me over? Is he going to pile drive him like he did uh, Nazem Kadri last year and then light a cigar up and skate off the ice like nothing happened? Like he is just all over the ice and he impacts the game in so many ways. But then also he drags guys into a, into a battle, right? Because he gets all fired up and worked up. Um, he has been such a good addition by Ken Holland. And then again, at a price point, didn't cost him anything to bring him in. And uh, I think he's around $5 million, whatever it is. But he's been a huge addition. But when he's sitting beside, uh, whether it's Leon or Connor, those guys, you know, they feel brave. But also they know if they get him the puck, most times that guy's going to score. And um, just a great addition. And he's a competitor. And he, he chirps. You know, he's, he's always talking. When I go to the games and watch him, he's always chirping at someone, saying something. And you can see guys are like, what is this guy's problem? I'm just trying to play a game out here. So a huge, huge addition to lawyers. And he got Hyman on the other side. Nugent Hopkins, who's a really smart player, very cerebral. And he kind of just fits wherever you need him. And then Yamamoto, who's a little undersized. And I worry about his size just as you get deeper in the playoffs. But he's a worker bee. So those are your top six guys. Like, pretty, you can match up with almost anyone in the league with those six. And they all bring something different, which I like. I don't like three guys that are all the same, you know, all small guys, all big guys, or all whatever. They're all kind of different. They're in a unique way. And they, they add a little bit of texture to those top six forwards. Well said. Yeah, well said. Yeah, Strutty, um, thank you so much. But I could do this all day with you here. We'll have to get you back on if the Oilers go on a deep run. And hopefully sure. we get Vegas Oilers second round. We got some buddies down here that are Vegas fans. We're going to bring them up to Edmonton if they play in the second round. So we'll get a nice cold beer with you, Strutty, if it is a Vegas Edmonton or their second round. I love to see it. And we can, you and I can go for a nice walk. Get up to 8,000 steps. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Strutty, Strutty. you're a beauty. Keep it up, buddy. You're doing great things for the Oilers. We appreciate you taking the time, bud. Okay. Thanks for having me on, boys.